This is Spunky. And Snarky. And we say, welcome Welcome to to the the show. show. Hello and welcome back to the show. It's already April, like I can't even believe this year has flown by. But then you think about, oh, last year we were just in the beginning of all the COVID stuff and having to stay at home and I was starting a garden and do all the crazy stuff. Yeah. But I'm vaccinated now. And I'll be soon. <laughs> things are getting done and it's starting to go back to normal a little bit. Anyway, today we decided to take a look back at another childhood favorite, Lyle Lyle Crocodile. And it's just a really cute story. So let's dive in. Today we're watching the HBO Storybook Musicals episode of Lyle Lyle Crocodile, which was from Season 1, Episode 1. The musical film was released on November 18, 1987, and it was adapted from the children's book of the same name and its predecessor, The House on East 88th Street, by Bernard Weber. The show opens up, and we already got some cool music going, lots of jazzy sax. And the art style almost, like, has a comic strip kind of vibe. And then there's lots of colors that are either, like, half colored in or colored in outside the lines. So we see a house on East 88th Street, and there's a new family moving in, the Prim family. And the moving truck has arrived, and things are getting unloaded, and it's mayhem. So, of course, we got to sing a song about it, right? Yep. (laughs) Because we're... Moving into a new house. Moving into a new house. It's enough to make you cry. They're very dramatic. We got the mom who kind of wears the pants in the family. The dad who's a little out there. There's a son. And they have this pet bird. So that's the basics of the Prim family. So they get everything moved and the movers leave. And they keep hearing this weird clinking noise from upstairs. And so the dad goes to check it out. And the dad comes back downstairs and he's just petrified. He, like, can't even talk. The mom's like, what is it? What was upstairs? Is it bigger than a bread box? Like, what's going on? Finally, the mom was like, all right, I'm going to go see what it is. She goes upstairs and looks in and quickly slams the door and is like, Joseph, there's a crocodile in our bathtub. So they run downstairs and freak out. The mom gets on the phone, like, operator, we need help, it's an emergency, and they're yelling at the son to stay downstairs, and the husband's trying to get a broom, and the opens a broom closet, and all the stuff falls out, and then he tries to dial the operator, and the son's like, dude, the phone's not plugged in, and it's mayhem. So during all this chaos, the doorbell rings and Joshua, the son, goes to open the door and sees a strange man with a pointy hat and a mustache. He hands him a letter and says, this will explain everything about the crocodile and leaves. (laughs) The dad reads the letter, which says, be kind, please, to my crocodile. He's gentle as can be. He must have tender, loving care and would not harm a flea. He's an artist and performer, does great tricks and is quite clean. Yours truly, Hector P. Valenti, star of stage and screen. P.S. His birthday is June 24th, and he comes from the Nile. He eats only Turkish caviar. P.P.S. His name is Lyle. The parents start to freak out, saying they can't have friends over with Lyle in the house, and that Turkish caviar is really expensive. Whatever will yeah. they do with him? Because that's the problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a big-ass crocodile. Yeah, yeah that might, like, snap my kid's head off. <laughs> But before anyone can answer, Lyle opens the door and comes downstairs. The family is terrified. Then Joshua tosses his football that he'd been playing with to Lyle, and he catches it and starts balancing it on different parts of his body and dances around. The family is now amazed and delighted by this. He then grabs a hula hoop and does some more tricks. When he finishes, he takes a bow and the family all run over and give him a hug. I don't care if he did tricks. I'm still not running over to hug a crocodile. (laughs) Just saying. Yeah. We get a montage with the mom singing a song about how every home should have a crocodile. And we see Lyle cleaning, helping around the house, and helping Joshua with his homework. One day there was a parade with a brass band marching down their street. And the dad asked, where's Lyle? The mom says that she hasn't seen him all day and calls him to come and watch the parade. They look around the house for him. 
Then the mom looks out the window and sees that Lyle is in the parade doing his balancing routine. The crowd loves it and it ends up making him famous. He was on the front page of various newspapers and giving TV interviews. Senior Valenti sees him on TV and is ecstatic and says, My Lyle! Back at the house, the postman delivers a huge pile of fan mail for Lyle. The dad says maybe Lyle should go through some of his mail because there might be something important and pulls out an odd looking letter and the dad reads it out loud. It says, just a few words to say. I shall return cordially Hector P. Valente, star of stage and screen. P.S. Very soon. P.P.S. To fetch my crocodile. Lyle jumps into a pile of mail and hides under a desk and the mom is like, oh no, what can we do? And the dad's like, there must be something. I just want to note when Hector P. Valente talks in the letter, like they have him in a little caption box at the bottom (laughs) of the screen, but he's such a personality that like his arms will flail outside the box (laughs) while he's talking, which is very funny. So they decide they need to cheer Lyle up. And so what better way to do that than with the song? I like this song. It's yeah. kind of like a calypso vibe. Yeah, they got a little like pan flute and like it's they're like banging tongues. on some like <laughs> pots and they're like, Why choose the night side? Look on the bright side. The world keeps turning every day. I like it. Anyway. Yeah, that was probably my favorite song of the special. The mom and Lyle and Joshua are looking and gossiping in the kitchen and everyone's enjoying themselves. Then the doorbell rings and Lyle just like shrinks. And of course it's Hector P. Valente. And he comes for Lyle and the dad's like, you can't have him. And they're like, he's happy here and we love him. He's a part of our family. And Hector is like, no, I must have him back. I raised him from a young crocodile and I'm the one who taught him all his tricks. And the mom's like, then why did you leave him? And he's like, I couldn't afford the Turkish caviar. So basically, he's a douche. Yeah. You cause all those sad animals on TV, Hector P. Valenti. That Sarah McLaughlin song was written just for you. <laughs> the angels. Lyle hides in the kitchen cupboard and while they're like arguing and Joshua goes and finds him and kind of sits in front of the cabinet and just sings a song. It's so sad. It's like, yeah. don't leave me now. I just die if you do. At the end of the song, Lyle opens the door and reaches out and grabs a hand. But it's not Joshua, it's the mom's hand. And she brings Lyle to Senior Valenti. Lyle gets shoved into the car and Joshua tries to run out after him. And Lyle looks all sad and he drives off in a taxi. And Joshua just turns to his parents and cries. Senior Valenti had big plans for Lyle. They were to travel far and wide doing shows across the globe. They stayed in many hotels, but sometimes the tubs were too big, other times too small or too crowded. Senior Valenti tried to make Lyle smile, but nothing worked. Lyle couldn't laugh, nor could he make other people laugh at their shows. He made an entire audience cry instead because his heart was just not in the performance. And the theater manager ends up firing Senior Valenti. He's like, why well, you make them cry? You're supposed to make them laugh. Meanwhile, at the house on East 88th Street, everyone is depressed without Lyle. Joshua waits by the door for the mailman every day, hoping to get a letter from Lyle. They finally end up getting another letter from Senior Valente reading, Just a few words to say, we shall return. Cordially, Hector P. Valenti, former star of stage and screen. P.S. I am sick of crocodile. P.P.S. And tears of crocodile. <laughs> the Prim family is overjoyed and starts decorating the house with the welcome home banner, L monogram towels, bubble bath, and boxes of Turkish caviar. The doorbell rings and it's Senior Valente and Lyle. The family runs towards Lyle and Senior Valente says, Here, take him back. He is no good to me and will never make anyone laugh again. The Prims and Lyle hug and Joshua tosses Lyle his football. And Lyle does his routine again and tosses the ball to Senior Valenti. This makes everyone laugh, including Senior Valenti. Lyle was back home where he belonged. So if you should happen to be walking past the house on East 88th Street and you hear funny sounds, it's only Lyle Lyle the Crocodile. The end. 
So thoughts on the episode. I still loved it. I love the songs. That Don't Leave Me Now song like got me all choked up when I was watching it. And it's still cute and it still has good music and there's lots of like good sex interludes. If you have kids, they'd probably love it. It's really cute. Yeah, I think it's still like relatable And today. the music's really good. And like the art is interesting in a way. It's dated because it's very reminiscent of the time, but I feel like it's still watchable. Yeah, I think I remember the book. I think I saw this before we got the book. Well, I mean, we didn't have the book, but I think we checked it out at the library. I think the book has a similar art style. Also, the voice acting is very good, too. Like, the dad is very quirky, and it, like, comes across very well. I forgot to mention earlier, the narrator and the voice of Senior Blalenti is done by Tony Randall from The Odd Couple. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Senior P. Blalenti. <laughs> what a douche. How the fuck are you going to leave your crocodile behind? And then once he gets all famous, you'd be like, oh, by the way, he's mine. I'm taking him back. Like, rude. First off, it's been hella months. And even if it wasn't a crocodile, like, if you leave your shit at somebody's house and they move in, well, guess what? It ain't your shit no more. <laughs> yeah. Watch too much people score for that. <laughs> But yeah, I really loved it. I enjoyed watching it again. And you should watch it too. It's on HBO Max, I believe. I found it on YouTube. (laughs) Whatever. Well, let's move on to the brain basement where I'm sure we're going to find something to talk about. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right, welcome to the brain basement where we're going to talk about some of our childhood favorite books and other things. Yeah, I don't remember reading this story so much as a kid. I love those books that, like, taught you how to draw. They give you, like, step-by-step instructions on how to draw, like, animals and stuff. I remember those. I did like the Shel Silverstein poems. I really like the Where the Sidewalk Ends and the Light in the Attic. Those aren't really books. They were, like, collections of poems, but they're interesting. What about you? Well, you know I love me some mysteries. So mm. I read Nancy Drew's Encyclopedia Brown. And we also read a lot of greatest illustrated classics. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about those. <laughs> that we bought from Walgreens. <laughs> you can still buy them. But they're kind of expensive now. Back in the day, I think they were like $2 or something like I that. I think they were like 2 for 5 <laughs> A couple of children's stories I do remember was the one about the flower chair. Oh, they did that on Reading Rainbow. I know exactly which one you're talking about, but I don't remember the name of the book. Yeah, the mom and the daughter like saved up and they finally buy like a comfy chair. I remember Bill and Pete, which is also about a crocodile (laughs) and a bird. The crocodile's name is William, but he has trouble learning to write it. And so the bird's like, we'll just call you Bill. (laughs) Well, we didn't talk about the nutshell collection. Oh, if you like alligators all around and eating chicken soup with rice. Yeah, I have Maurice Sendak, who did Where the Wild Things Are. His other books, which we read more than that one. Yeah, it was in a little collection, and they were my favorite. And then there was a TV special, which we'll probably do at some point in time. Yes. So, look forward to that. The only Reading Rainbow episode I really remember is like the Follow the Drinking Gourd one. But Follow the Drinking Gourd. I just know the song. the old man's awakening to carry <laughs> you to freedom. Follow the Drinking Gourd. But I remember that book too. Like I think I checked that out from the library. There are lots of good children's books when we were kids. Of course, my favorite thing to get from the library was a fairy tale theater VHSs. And I would get MathNet and Ghostwriter VHSs mm-hmm. in the 90s. Which I'm sure we'll be covering all of those eventually. Well, we did a MathNet already. Okay, we're rambling now. <laughs> so why don't we move on to the music spotlight? All right, and welcome to the music spotlight, where today's topic is bathroom songs. Because Lyle was found in the bathroom. So let's start off with number one on our list. A little Beatles ditty called She Came In Through the Bathroom Window. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. This is from Abbey Road and they have that whole little end medley where they have like a bunch of small songs. But they all work together and this is part of that. The Beatles are great. I mean, what else can you say about them? So number two is one of my favorite jams. Mm. <laughs> It's Climax with Beaten in the ladies' room. I'll be back real soon. Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh Yeah, I love this song. It's my jam. Gotta shake your butt. <laughs> I 
Number three is another one of my favorite groups, the English Beat or the Beat as they're known in the UK with Mirror in the Bathroom. I love the song. It's a good ska, like reggae-ish song. And the English Beat have a ton of good songs. So check them out if you don't know them. Number four, we have No Doubt with the Bathwater. I yeah. love No Doubt. They're like one of my favorites. Their old stuff was like the best. Oh, uh, Tragic Kingdom. Yeah, that album was like my high school jam. <laughs> and then at number five, of course, we have the classic Bobby Darren with Splish Splash. We was taking a bath. Was How a- the hell do you not know a party's going on in your own house? Uh, someone clearly broke into your house and started having a party <laughs> while, while you were taking, taking a bath. bath. <laughs> yeah. Either that or you were having a party and you lost track of time and then you're still in the bath. It could be worse. It could be like that Dragnet episode where those parents got high and then they forgot that their kid was in the tub. Yeah, yeah, that sounds <laughs> bad. That's a whole other episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For our honorable mention, we decided since this is Lyle Lyle, we needed to have a little Elton John crocodile rock. Because Lyle rocks. Na, 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 na. Yeah, this is a good song. Because we remember when Rock was young and me and Lyle had so much fun. All right, well, that's all the music we have for you for today. (laughs) So if you want to check out these songs in full, you can check them out on our website. Thank you for joining us and listening to our rambles as we've taken this little trip down memory lane. I hope you join us next week because we got more fun in store and, of course, more bad singing and fun tunes. So we'll see you next time. If you want to drop us a line, you can email us at spunkyandsnarkyshow at gmail.com. You can check out our website at spunkyandsnarkyshow.wordpress.com. You can leave us a voicemail at our Anchor page, which is anchor.fm slash spunkyandsnarkyshow. Or you can reach out to us on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok pages. Links to all those are on the website. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.